Mabuhai, Kamustika, welcome, how are you? This is Bob from Love Beyond the Sea. Don't dredge up the past with your Filipina. Let bygones be bygones or you'll never move forward in your relationship. Subscribe to Love Beyond the Sea and maybe learn about how to leave your past behind and have a successful relationship with a Filipina in marriage. That's where it's at as far as I'm concerned. Share videos so men can finally find love beyond the sea and live in relative peace. Remember to get notifications and I want to see your comments. How to communicate with your Filipino wife is a live stream. I will link in uh, the description box for you and this topic is a viewer request. One way is uh, by reminding of the past. This is one thing you do not want to do. This is a bad way to communicate. The discretion of a man defers his anger and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. That's from Proverbs 19.11. We are to speak the truth in love, Ephesians 4.15, and we can be angry, but we are not to sin, Ephesians 4.26. We all screw up multiple times. We don't want to be reminded of it. In sports, some coaches try to push players to greater levels of competence by reminding them they aren't perfect. If they didn't do it perfectly, they could have still done it better. Now that wouldn't motivate me to do anything but want to punch them. If your Filipino wife is doing something again that you may have already told her you don't like, there is a temptation to recall past occurrences to make your point, as if it would help, to not necessarily speak it out of love, but instead to wound, and it doesn't have to be that way. We could talk a long time about forgiveness, but that factors into the idea of not reminding your wife of past transgressions. We are to forgive 70 times 7, which means always. That doesn't preclude trying to find a resolution, however. It is just about doing it the right way, the way that doesn't cause more problems and honors the person that we are at odds with. The Bible says of those who are forgiven that God remembers their sins no more, and that is simply how I am to regard my Filipino wife. Here are some helpful tips from a place called psychcentral.com that I will put in the description for you. Number one, acknowledge the problem. Figure out what it is that's causing you to hold a grudge. You have to know what the problem is in order to solve it. When you allow yourself to see the real issue, you can then make a choice to move forward from there. Number two, share your feelings. A grudge can form when an issue isn't fully confronted. Without being judgmental about yourself or another, clarify your feelings on the situation. Then decide if this is something you will work on in your own heart or by contacting the other person involved. Only when you are ready, communicate with the other person about the issue. Whether you can work it out on your own or um, involve the other person, you may feel more relieved by releasing that built-up tension and all involved can have a better understanding of the situation and be able to resolve the issue. Number three, switch places. To get a better understanding of the other person, try putting yourself in their shoes. This will give you a better understanding of their point of view and behavior. Maybe the person in question was in a lot of pain. This doesn't justify their negativity, but it will help you to understand it. The more you understand the other person and their behavior, the easier it is to let go of a grudge. A natural response may be to develop a grudge or even a hatred of the person who has caused this pain. But the person who holds the grudge always suffers more. The longer we hold a grudge, the more difficult it is to forgive and move on. You can begin to free yourself when you begin to forgive. Now that's from the article, My Thoughts, This Idea of Switching Places has really helped me in my marriage to a Filipina. You know, we come from quite different places in life. There is the culture difference, our age gap, generation gap. I chose her, I pursued her, I proposed to her and married her. So it behooves me to know her as well as I can. There are times I tell myself, put yourself in her shoes. I like this idea of switching places. It has often paid off for me. An excellent way to do this, in addition to ref reflecting on what I know about her, is to be in the Philippines to get a better idea of her life. That's why I recommend, if at all possible, to go to the Philippines. 
And there are some men who communicate a lot through social media and webcaming, but don't actually make a trip to the Philippines. I think they're missing out on a lot, which could lead to making assumptions that will lead to some disputes when they are together. Accept what is. Choose to create your own healing with or without an apology. Don't wait for the person you are upset with to come around to you. For all you know, they are already past the issue and just not putting as much thought into it. And even if they don't offer an apology, it doesn't mean that they are not remorseful. Number five, don't dwell on it. Once you have decided to move on, keep on moving. Don't put too much thought into the situation or continuously discuss it. It will only make things worse and harder to get over. If ever the issue is brought up in conversation, change the subject or just look at it as the past and leave it there. Number six, take the positive. For every negative situation, there is a positive. If you take this as a learning experience, you will benefit from knowing more about yourself and the other person. Choose to learn a valuable lesson or walk away with a better understanding that can help you let go of the issue and not resent the other person. Number seven is let it go. Letting go allows room for peace and happiness. A long lasting grudge will only drain you physically and emotionally and can surely affect your health. You will use more energy than you can imagine by holding a grudge than you will by letting go. My thoughts about that, you may have to let, it go, let go of an issue for the sake of peace and resume it later. Maybe it won't even come up again. Your Filipina likely knows exactly what the issues are, even if she doesn't let on that she does. Most issues don't require immediate resolution. Number eight is to forgive. Of course, forgiveness doesn't mean that you're going to forget the issue. It's just acknowledging your differences and accepting that no one is perfect. We all make mistakes that we should learn from. Forgiving isn't the easiest thing to do, especially when you've endured a lot of hurt and pain, but it's the only way to look, truly let go and have peace. And my thoughts on that, the best anyone can do is offer a genuine apology that admits they have hurt the other person and make amends by changing their behavior. If that is being done, then dredging up the past shows that someone has a forgiveness problem and that will stymie the growth of their relationship. And it may be that a Westerner needs to be extra patient with his Filipino wife as compared to someone with less differences between them. I realize that being able to forgive is something we will both need to keep doing throughout our marriage. It's important to me for my wife to know that I will forgive her for anything. And that does not mean that I'm concerned she will think she has carte blanche to get away with anything she wants. It is meant for her to have a safe place to be human. We both disappoint each other from time to time. If we were to dredge up the past times we have been hurt, then we won't be able to get momentum in our marriage. Forgiveness might be the most critical skill for you to learn before, during, and after marrying a Filipina. Leave the past in the past and bury the hatchet to move ahead with your love beyond the sea. No. We can talk. It start to light up. Whoa. This is our last day. The last day. Last no, not day. no, not the last day and the last night. Yeah, last night. The last night. In Paris, France. In Paris, France.